Joe <laughs> Corman. Okay, and Dalton, what's your fucking deal? Because I know both these idiots. What's my deal? I'm, yeah. I'm just the, the Shane Texas Torres boy. impersonator. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You need more eyeliner. Uh, does, uh, wait, does he wear eyeliner? He looks like yeah. he does. Dalton, <laughs> Dalton and Jay White Cotton are good friends. And Dalton can't yeah. speak for himself, Robbie? Very no, no. He's, he's, he's my child. Okay. <laughs> so I know Jay. I, I've met Jay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love Jay very much. He's a great guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me and Jay are boys. We... um. We worked together in I'm trying to remember how we met. I think we were working together at the, the now defunct Plano Hyenas. Oh uh, yeah. And yeah, and I think that's like where we became friends. This was like a few years ago. That's a bad place. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's closed down now, but it was always a bad spot. It was like it used to be a gym or something, so it had these vaulted ceilings. It was a terrible club. And me and Jay both got complaints. Yeah, I believe it. He had too much beard and your face was too round. Come on, Dalton. We're making friends. <laughs> uh, That'd be a great comment. Hilarious feature. Face far too round, though. I thought it, I, I thought it was the moon. I thought I was outside. Yeah, I know. I, got, I have very, a very soft baby face. And it's getting fatter now that COVID in, in this cold weather is keeping me indoors. I'm gaining so much weight. Well, that's oh, all no. right, man. Where yeah, do you all come live? Wow. Where are all of you people? Uh, I, Joe and I are like 10 minutes from each other. We're both in Brooklyn. Yeah. We're Brooklyn boys. I'm visiting yeah. home in the Bay Area. Okay. Well, good stuff all around. Three Joe, time zones. Wow. What, <laughs> yeah. what, a, what, a, what, what a feat of coordination. The power yeah. of 2021, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, this is very powerful. We wouldn't be a... able to do this. Like 20 years ago, this would have been impossible. We would have wow. been on like a conference call. The audio would have been trash. We also would have, we would have all been famous because it was like 12 comedians total in the 90s. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, Gorman, but... you're skinny and sober. Is that right? No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm fat and drunken. Did you get sober <laughs> and skinny? <laughs> <laughs> I had no... Dude, I... My weight fluctuates like a fucking Hollywood actor in, in roles. I'm all, I'm all over the place. Well, right now, I'm last... having like a, yeah, I'm having a skinny period right now, though. Yeah, the last time I saw you was in front of the punchline, and you were smiling maniacally at no one. And I you, no, I not noticed... Joe. Yeah, not not <laughs> not Joe. And I think you lost like a hundred pounds or something. I I, I lost uh, yeah. So I lost like uh, eighty pounds in San Francisco. Uh, and then, like when I moved to New York, I gained like fifty pounds, and now I've I've, I've lost about thirty of that. So well, like I'm 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 slowly coming back to like a normal appearance. Well, I'm proud of you, JoJo. You're always so funny. It's so great to see you, man. Thanks, man. It's great, dude. I'm glad you're able to make time uh, for us and, and and do this, man. Between uh, all, yeah, let's introduce all the, um all, all, everything going on, man. Yeah, the, uh, the nicest so, man in comedy, ladies nice, and gentlemen. Yeah, Sam yeah. Talent. Yeah, that's a that's a bad introduction. <laughs> the nicest guy, yeah. <laughs> nice is, but Sam is very nice guy. Like one he of the nice. Gen, he has a pure heart, man. It's he's, true. He's, it's all. It's about. It's about the love of comedy and the camaraderie and the experience, and that's and that's why he's doing the Loud Boys. He's the only guest we've had who didn't ask for money up front. Yeah, I think that's that's. <laughs> yeah. Even everyone in, else yeah. was like, "Where's the money?" Well, Write the I'm check looking, first, pretty boy. I'm looking at Dalton's storage shed he's living in. I'm guessing the budget's, <laughs> I think the budget's high enough. <laughs> I mean, Robbie obviously has money. He's, he, I mean, we all know about you. <laughs> yeah, we, had, yeah. We, we, we paid uh, Andrew Polk and Jay White Cotton $1,000 each to do our show. <laughs> Damn, that's the first money Polk made off any kind of comedy in a long time. <laughs> well, yeah, we... <laughs> We gave him a gift card to Bubba Gump, and that seemed to satisfy him, actually. You asked me if I wanted to have Polk on for this, and I'm very glad he's not here, because he is mm. pure evil. Yeah, he, he brings, is. He brings all the malevolence out of me. Yeah, I wanted to have Polk on again, because I he was he's a good friend of mine, and we had a great time uh, in Philly when you did that show at Good Good Comedy Theater, yeah. which is hilarious. You might be the last white man even allowed in the building there. 
because uh, they so, like so Robbie ran this bit on me about three weeks ago what he just said and it didn't hit in the group chat and it didn't hit here I just want everyone to know <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't you a revelation he had off the top of his head <laughs> I, I think I said that on another podcast too because <laughs> oh we were God. talking about the good good comedy theater Robbie do you want to you want to take that out for another round you want to do a take two on that one uh try yeah. again okay <laughs> Um, I don't know how to respond to that. Yeah, so, um, I, uh, I heard that look, heard that I'm a consummate <laughs> professional. I'm bringing my tested material. Did it work in the test? Maybe not. But here's the thing: I look, always many, tested it. <laughs> how many open micers? Let me ask you this: How many open micers do we know who they bomb every time and never? They think that that joke is is going to work at some point. Maybe it will. So I think if you keep telling it. It might, you might get I mean, that's been, that's been my whole career. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm like, you know, this Mark Marin impression isn't working for an open mic, but maybe a real crowd will love it. <laughs> By the way, Robbie, you're not the first guy I've ever met to go on stage at an open mic and do a Mark Marin impression, but it's so you funny. Also, it's so inside. Also, by the way, the other guy I knew who did that was trying to be Mark Marin. Like anytime Marin got like a, a haircut or trimmed his beard this guy would do the same thing oh god it was, it was i kind of get i mean great. he's got a pussy yeah. getting look though you know yeah, what i mean sure. like i i could see copying that look yeah it's like a 70s you gotta be skinny to pull a fat mark Marin would not work but like if you're also skinny i would go for that i don't know i think meatloaf was kind of the fat mark Marin. they dressed the same <laughs> <laughs> That's such a funny thing to be fat and be called meatloaf and be a serious artist. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. see, see, Robbie, I just said that at the top of my head and it got a big laugh. So I, think, <laughs> I think that's the way this should we should try and move in that direction. I don't like guests on the show anymore. I think I think it's better when we don't have guests. <laughs> Sam, Sam, how Sam, how well do you know Robbie? Because you have no idea how much this is hurting him right now. <laughs> if I was saying anything that I thought would actually hurt Robbie's feelings, I would not do that. I know Robbie to be a very funny, also wild-eyed when I knew you back in the Bay. Because I know yeah. I know you guys, uh, Dalton. Yeah. I know you uh, from that Stay Puft Marshmallow Man competition that we both <laughs> got into. <laughs> but... <laughs> I know Robbie from just uh, you know the Bay, and I I don't think Robbie has a I don't I don't think I'm not hurting you right good one no no I am like sensitive but if it's if it's like funny I'll fucking give it up but then but then I have that moment after I get ripped on where it's like damn I do do that you know what I mean like I'm like haha fuck I'm a fucking retard you know what I mean but feel free to let it loose I don't care okay I'm glad I have it's your funny. approval but thank you Dalton's very protective he was on Amico's spook show and he was like Robbie's gonna because uh, Zach Amico like made fun of me and Dalton was like Robbie's gonna like kill himself when he hears that and I was like I don't know that yeah. was funny Robbie what? scares me Robbie is so you know he's sensitive like a woman and <laughs> I do have girl brain I have, her yeah. I have horrific girl brain Robbie reminds me of my mom I'm like I'm walking on eggshells I'm like just please don't scream at me please don't pound on my door so you're yeah. not sure if your mom's Jewish or just from Boston? <laughs> <laughs> Joe, what are you drinking? Tea? I'm drinking pee. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> pee, baby. I'm, clean. Yeah. I'm healthy as fuck, man. I was watching this documentary on UFC fighters who wake up at 6 a.m. and drink pee. And I'm like, all right, well, I'll wake up at 6 p.m. and drink some, some pee. Dude, I feel great. 6 p.m. I'm powered up, man. You look good, Joe. Thanks, brother. I yeah. feel, I feel, dude, I'm having a glow up during the, this lockdown was the greatest thing to ever happen to me, man. I hope bats on the menu for 2021 too, baby. <laughs> <I'm really laughs> yeah, I dude. Like I, being inside. I can't wait for this pandemic to end so I can eat bats again. <laughs> oh, dude, I can't wait. Let's go to a cave. Let's go spelunking. <laughs> grab we, a bat on the we way go, down. We go to a cave and just bring like bibs. <laughs> and like, and yeah. like a picnic fucking. Dude, if they start having bat bibs now instead of lobster bibs, that would, you know. Because like lobster was once not considered a delicacy, it used to be considered a poor person's food. So I bet bat is gonna be fucking, yeah, the the uh, the food du jour. Yeah, kind of like anal sex and AIDS. Now it's a delicacy, yeah. but yeah, back in the day, it was like, remember, dude, you guys like when, started this thing. Yeah. 
Remember when being a butt licker used to be like an insult? You're like, oh, you butt licker. And now it's like, oh, what a what a sensual human being. To yeah. Now about. every comic starts their set with y'all eat ass. It's like, damn, yeah. how things I didn't know change, you. I didn't you know, know you're working urban rooms, Robbie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I play a lot of low information game. voter uh, shows. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> she whiz. <laughs> so, know. is this, what do you guys do on this podcast besides we, we what you fucking just chill, homie? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we just hang out. Hang, brother. Nice. Remember, remember, remember in the olden days when there was a green room and you were just shooting the shit. With yeah. The <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what if that happened in a podcast? Yeah, yeah I remember the, being in. I remember being in green rooms and you bringing me my chicken wings. Those were good days, right. Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Alanta, I hope this is okay. They didn't have a. Uh, Joe, cheese. how awful was the green room at the punchline? <laughs> I didn't mind it. Uh, uh, it was. Uh, it was a great. Uh, it was a great green room. And, uh, Wait, why don't you guys like the green uh, room? Live Nation did a great job of providing for its employees. And uh, <laughs> well, I got a free Red Bull. Well, Robbie, yeah, you, dude, I would, I would, I, I got, I had sugar-free Red Bulls. I could get a flatbread pizza, baby. I, was I could look at a framed picture of Dave Chappelle. <laughs> Pretty yeah, fun. <laughs> Paula Poundstone. Yeah. Well, Robbie, you fit in there. That's the thing is I was always be in there and just be like gigantic and nervous. It is small as hell. Yeah. It's like a closet. They, yeah, for I, sure. I think they redesigned it. I think they redesigned it. I think they got cubbies in there now. Ooh, cubbies. Ooh. Yeah. I haven't, yeah. I haven't been there in over They a got year, cubbies because they couldn't fit in the chubbies. Huh? You know okay. You know what's hilarious? See? Though? That's called riffing. <laughs> yeah, there Robbie's you go. Robbie's doing it. Yeah. Hey, I've when... been noticing... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just go to fucking material. <laughs> you don't park in a driveway, but you drive in a parkway? What the fuck is wrong with yeah. these fucking retards? Who were the marketing <laughs> geniuses behind that one? <laughs> yeah. <Huh? laughs> no, but honestly, we do need to stop the steal. Stop the steal? Is this politics? Like, yeah. Like Pittsburgh? No. Yeah. No, I believe how the yeah. Democrats stole the election. Wait, what's yeah, the Dalton Dem talking about? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Wasn't P Pittsburgh was like a steel town? Is Robbie I like, like I like how we had <laughs> we had Sam on to basically audit our podcast. Like, what the fuck are you guys? What is it? <laughs> well, you guys, you guys caught me on like a ter a bad day. But uh, what's wrong hanging out, Daltonian? Come on, man. No, it's just that shit I was telling you guys about in our group chat. Do you want to talk about it now? On, oh, on yeah, no, screen. just exclude me. That sounds cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm uh, uh, no, Sam, Sam. You're a, you're a, you're a, you are a, a connoisseur of all things comedy. Surely you're aware of Dr. Katz, professional therapist. Well, <laughs> I need you to go through a little squiggle vision and help out of my man, Deep Pruitt. Pruitt, okay. go oh, ahead no, and sit I already on the couch. figured it out. I already figured out what was going on. I, um, I've been taking Lexapro for the last several months okay. and something happened with my most recent refill it was like a lesser dose and i started like like a few days ago i started getting brain zaps and all this other withdrawal shit from it mm. and so like the last probably four or five days i've been like convinced i'm dying yeah <laughs> and i called my i called my dad last night just because like i just needed someone to talk to because i was freaking out and i said hey dad and i just started crying oh <laughs> and man yeah, and then my roommate, I guess my roommate heard me through the walls because this morning he came and knocked on my door and was like, oh, hey, man, I heard you had a hard time last night. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no. Ah. And he started, but he told, he explained to me that he went through something similar when Mercury was in retrograde. <laughs> he, he oh, said, my God. <laughs> he, he suggested that I learn some chakra meditations to help with what I'm dealing with which is a chemical imbalance. Damn, Dalton. I really wish you would have left me out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, dude. Sam, you, you, don't, you don't like being burdened? <laughs> you, you're no. not a fan of burdens? <laughs> hey, man, you guys are New York comics. I'm sure you love talking about mental health instead of having punchlines. Look, Dalton, <laughs> I'm with you, brother, all right? And uh -oh. if you ever need, if you need that dose upped, let the old man know, because my wife can write Lexapro scripts across state lines. Oh, I got well. I got it fixed. I got. I called my doctor and fixed it. I just okay. Uh, I did not want to burn. I just was. I. I don't know. I'm preambling. If I seem off this episode, it's because. Uh, it's been it's been a rough week. I think you're on <laughs> but, fire, Dalton. Don't sweat it. Thank all right? you. Yeah, dude. We love. Yeah, you, dude. Dalton. Don't worry. And we also, you, how Dalton. how great is it that you can call your father, 
and he can, uh, you know, take his leather gloves off and stop mutton busting for 10 minutes to <laughs> receive your phone call. I mean, that's lovely. Yeah. I could not cry on the phone with my dad. He would probably be like, what, what the hell? Are you, what are you doing? Come and he'd just get like upset and then hang up on me. So it's nice. You I want to cry. Yeah. Cry to your father. My dad. Yeah. I want to call my dad with my problems. I want to give him the satisfaction of winning. Yeah. Sorry, old man. I'm going to be closed off forever, man. I just don't call my dad because I think it's gay. How you going to call yeah, another dude. man? Why, why? Yeah, your dad. <laughs> How you going to call, call man. another man? <laughs> I, don't I don't know why. I don't know why I called my dad of all people. You, I was. You, you gonna hold a phone up to your ear? Why didn't you? Why don't you come over and smoke a bolski with your old buddy Joe Gorman? Yeah, that makes <laughs> it better. <laughs> yeah, have have a psychotic break and hang out with Joe Gorman. Yeah, dude. <laughs> great idea. Be fun, dude. Nothing Let's helps. The rabbit hole goes. Just his own blinking eyes staring at you. <laughs> Joe does help with mental health because you're like, well, at least I'm not crazy. Yeah, <laughs> when you're hanging out with him, <laughs> I guess that's true. Yeah, I tried. I tried to calm down. I pounded a uh, uh, a bottle of Sing Tao and three cores Yellow Belly Tall Boys last night. Just couldn't get drunk for the life of me. Yeah, Is Sing Tao a beer? Oh yeah, yeah it's a Japanese, it's a Japanese beer. beer. Ah, onurobu. Yeah. Well, Dalton, I feel for you, man. I'm glad you got a. A network of uh, family you can reach out to. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's important, man. I mean, what else are you going to do? Just sit there and fucking be sad? Call your dad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was weird. It's weird, like, when your uh, your brain starts, the wheels start getting out from under you because you, you don't realize you're going crazy at first. You're just like, man, I feel like I'm getting sick. And then, like, three days later, it's, you know, people are watching me and the walls are closing in. Well, All it's got to be it's got to be louder. crazy to to have that kind of breakdown with the your internal internal monologue because the way your voice sounds you're just, <laughs> you're just like oh hell man this shit's really hit the fucking fan man i don't know if i'm coming or going i've seen more sunsets than sunrises and shit dad nab it, the, dad, nab it I, the existential condition is nothing short of a mouse trap <laughs> <laughs> i've thought about that a lot i do not have the accent for being depressed i should be like a stoic farmer that's you know, like that's my... dalton's that's what's amazing about Dal i'll watch dalton go up on stage and be like man y'all this hellish facade of a life you know I'll be like damn dalton is much Wait, smarter Robbie, what you... <laughs> what i was about to compliment you Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, Talon, I've seen you spiral on stage. It's always very funny. You remember? That's you're true. like, I don't think love exists. On when I we did a, mics on a, Valentine's Day. I, I got Dalton's last set on 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 stage when we were allowed to do on stage comedy in New York. Oh, I have yeah. it. It's great. It's oh, it's great. Down. But it's, it's on like YouTube. The Dalton's demeanor and the and his adjectives betray how smart he act or his, his accent mixed with it's an interesting juxtaposition. Yeah, saying, working yeah. class hands, soul of a poet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's beautiful, Joe. You should yeah. be his manager. Gonna, Dalton, yeah, that should I be am. the first line of your bio. <laughs> with working class hands and the soul of a poet, Dalton Pruitt entertains audiences all over the country. <laughs> yeah, I'm the poet laureate of Bushwick. Ooh. The... You should get a poet hat like uh, Peter Pan or something. A Dalton, promise me you'll never wear hats. Guys like I us promise. are not built for hats. All right. I know, I know that's right, dude. All right. I was just yeah. thinking because I used to be really fat. I was like 300 pounds. Oh, here we I, go. Goody party fattest, for Robbie. No, at my fattest, I wore a fedora. I was like, oh, why God. did I fucking nice. think that? <laughs> why did I fucking think that was a good look? Robbie, why? It's a, it's a distraction, man. That was like, it was a cool thing in like the early aughts because Scott yes. was all around. It was before it was a punchline, but it was like, I was like right in the target of looking yeah. so <laughs> stupid because it was, it was right before, before yeah. it was dude, coined I as a punchline. one in high school. I wore yeah. one in high school, dude. I was in Florida. Everyone wore it. I think, I think, you know what? It, I think it was it just was, us. But everyone in the uh, all of the loud boys at one point. Yeah, we were all fedora. Oh my god, dude, we, were we were fedora all, guys. Dude, yeah. We all lived. We all lived separate high school experiences, and yet the same high school. Yeah, experience. we probably all unironically thought, "Why can't they date a nice guy like ah! me?" <laughs> oh, of course, Robbie. 
<laughs> of course, dude. Damn, damn, if we all went to the same high school, we probably could have organized a school shooting easily, dude. dude. <laughs> Instead of a fucking podcast, we could have oh, fucking man. taken those jocks to fucking... <laughs> Uh, we I would have. I had a pork pie hat in eighth grade. My uncle threw it out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I literally took it off my head and tossed it out the side of his Wrangler. See, we would have been like, Sam, you're cool. Don't go to school tomorrow. Oh, yeah, I would yeah, have hung yeah. out with you guys for sure. Yeah, yeah. Nice, dude. Oh, <laughs> Sam would have hung out with us and pretended not to listen when our conversations got too dark. I'm like, oh, all right, those guys. <laughs> These rascals. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there, there they go with their schemes and plans again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> schemes. That's a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is all just a bit. <laughs> well this i mean this show is a scheme like this is a real ed and nitty type plot to try and make <laughs> figure out a way to make some money in comedy yeah <laughs> who's who yeah what if we keep talking i'm ed i'm double d <laughs> okay well, i guess Wait. i guess that makes me eddie <laughs> <laughs> the leader of the group thank you i'm the ampersand <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, now we're man. all we're in, in reality we're all courage the cowardly dog <laughs> we're all yeah just, the hero the hero yeah, of a the, hero who's scared show? yeah plunged into that show is so depressed i think we've talked about this but that show really we've talked about courage on this show <laughs> we've, we've gone through all of our childhood when we the last time we were happy yeah. memories <laughs> i'm i feel like we're all we all think we're johnny bravos <laughs> oh mama hey, mama Hey mama. hey mama oh i'm a rapist um, did he rape by today's standards sex uh, past johnny yeah. for sure by, dude. By, by by being yeah by being nice to a woman absolutely <laughs> <laughs> i mean the fact that he the fact that he provoked so much physical violence from women yeah. you know what You're i mean i didn't watch cartoons would you watch uh, cartoons? really yeah i, what, I like, mean i didn't we didn't have like cable and shit so i missed out on all that damn What'd you do? Do you have any cool VHSs in the house? Yeah, a lot of Ninja Turtles VHSs in the house for sure. Yeah. Ghostbusters. Um, yeah, like people will talk about like Powerpuff Girls or, uh, you know, what's the other one? Dexter. The cat Dog. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cat people dog. are always talking about Cat Dog and I'm left out in the lurch. <laughs> Dalton sang the theme song for Cat Dog, actually. Whoa. What would you like to sing it for? Oh, uh, yeah. Sam cat Dog. Cat Dog. <laughs> <laughs> see i'm sure this is a great bit I, yeah. i've never yeah, felt more a... alone uh robbie that's damn. actually the best compliment you've ever given me is that i have the same dulcet tones as the cat dog uh theme <laughs> cat <song. dog. laughs> yeah what a funny nickelodeon in the 90s was kind of like it was it was like what if there was a cat it was also a dog and they're like hell yeah let's do well, it dude, that and... was the heyday man when they still had dan schneider in yeah. the captain's chair and That's when did. the Nickelodeon, yeah, the Nickelodeon icon was a foot. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Little he kids created a, all moist on uh, television, dude. It was great. Yeah, he, just teaching Drake Bell how to rape. What, yeah. a, what a great guy. That's bunch, nuts, man. <laughs> Drake just Bell. Who's Drake Bell? Uh, you ever watch Drake, Drake and Josh? Josh. Yeah, no, he didn't, dude. <laughs> he <laughs> was like, this fucking nerd Sam. was like reading books and shit, dude. Of course he's not gonna watch Drake and Josh. Probably fucking writing a report on Moby Dick. Not fucking learning about Drake and Josh working at a fucking movie theater, yeah. dude. Yeah, Come I was. On, I was always doing extra homework. That's yeah. Me. Yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah, he's like, wake me up. Uh, what did I watch as a kid? William F. Buckley interviews. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Go to your yeah, house just... and watch Nickelodeon. I got this big ass book to read for fun. <laughs> <laughs> Dalton, defend me. <laughs> <laughs> just... Uh, Dalton, where's my hero? The cat dog I, mean, I was just imagining. I was imagining uh, Dan Schneider teaching Drake how to rape like the Karate Kid, and he goes, "No can defend. No can defend from rape." Uh, That's good. No, see, yeah. I don't know, dude. I've been I've been binging Cobra Kai, so a lot of my references are going to be Karate Kid uh, related. That's all right. Yeah, well, I've never actually seen the movie, though. You know what? I don't know if I have either. Robbie... Sam, what have you seen? And then maybe we can riff on that. <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> what have you seen? And then maybe we can riff on that. Well, hold on, hold on. For the, for the, listener, for the listener, Sam Sam, the, uh, Sam just published a, a self-published a novel 
Oh, oh good. I'm glad you said self-published. Thank you, Dalton. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> dude, I wasn't even thinking. Dude, I was trying to be professional. I had no idea how underhand, how backhanded that. I'm so sorry. Dude, uh, that, yeah. uh, that is so embarrassing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sam is a published <laughs> author. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. I said that wrong. He's a loser. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. Oh, oh my God. Dude, I seriously wasn't even thinking. Dude. I love it. <laughs> I love it. You know what's so funny? I listened to Sam's WTF and he was like, yeah, self-publishing was like my greatest shame. <laughs> so yeah. the fact that Dalton fucking. <laughs> well, that's I, only Dalton did his homework. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's what, well, let me, let me That's what I was trying to get to is the how I even know. Uh, anything about Sam is I just I listened to that interview and he he scored that sweet sweet Marin spot because he wrote uh he wrote a book uh self published and <laughs> I doubled down I shouldn't have I'm sorry dude <laughs> Dalton you're doing great I did I yeah. wrote a book you guys can get it at samtalent.com with two L's check it out everyone i'm sure joe uh, hasn't read it but other people i have. actually i actually did read it go. and i enjoyed it <laughs> sam all right i am, well, joe I am learning to read sam trust me joe one. would joe would never lie trust me i know i regret yeah, being honest, mean to i'm joe. honest joe gorman <laughs> i know it yeah. sucks you are honest i haven't uh i haven't gotten a chance to read it yet because i'm balls deep in this big ass book i don't understand but is that I what you call women interview. you know, yeah <laughs> books <laughs> What are you reading? Judy Carter's comedy Bible. Oh my God. What a brutal, brutal slog that book is. Yeah, dude. I'm at the part about the crimes where it's just all these women who get raped and murdered. 400 and pages of just those same crimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's you rough, read it? Man. Yeah, I read it, man. Because uh, everyone said I had to or I was gay. And uh, <laughs> it rocks. It's good. It's just, it's, it's who really are these? Hard to get. Oh, I love it. Who are these jock literary people? Yeah, if you haven't read fucking Cormac <laughs> McCarthy, you're fucking gay. Oh, I see well, you never. I see you yeah. never went to a writing class, Robbie, because yeah. people like that exist, man. It's uh, also actually, not by yeah. Cormac McCarthy, you fool. It's Roberto Bolaño, you Robbie. piece of literal shit, Robert. I was trying to yeah. do a fucking uh, a riff. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. It's like hanging out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. it is. we're just chilling, baby. No, yeah, we have an edge up on other podcasts by having like three people who like are funny. Yeah, most yeah. Going, man. Me, but, Dalton, and uh, Joe. Yeah, <laughs> I knew. So I'm setting myself up for that. I was completely. I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. And I've been um, alone in this house all day, just chomping at the bit to do this. So hell yeah, hell dude. yeah. excited. I like that you brought. Yeah. I'm glad you have a microphone because sometimes we book guests and they're like in a fuck. It sounds like they're in like traffic or something. Like, like they're always like at the headphones on. Like, remember, what? remember, uh, Jay was like on his phone and it looked like he was in like a gypsy caravan. He had, Jay like, was a, on like it felt like a, a first generation iPhone or something. And yeah. Was like, what white cotton? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, Dalton, how old is Jay White Cotton? He will not tell me. He do, He won't tell me either. I'm guess. I I want to say. 37 38 he reminds me of like a 38 year old he, he is 42 pictures. years young he could he be some pictures when he was he was working on some merch and one of the ideas was uh like his name and then the for that album cover of big tex mm -hmm. on fire yeah high lonesome said, like high lonesome yes sorry the title escaped me high lonesome the big tex on fire and underneath it it said like established I want to say 1978 was the date. I believe that. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know what the truth is. It's so weird to be friends with Jay White Cotton because we couldn't be any more different on stage. But I respect what he does so much. He's so precise in his word choice. And I'm up there slapping my gut and like doing dolphin noises compared to what Jay does, you know. And uh, yeah, he's he's the fucking man, dude. Oh, Jay's the best. Dude. I, some of my best memories of doing comedy in Texas were like doing shows with Jay, like the few times, he, you know, he'd make it out to Dallas and then just going to like Whataburger afterwards and talking shit till like six in the morning. Yeah. It and was, him was getting furious at the spicy level of the ketchup. <laughs> yeah. He never did that. Was, was it's that not spicy thing? enough. <laughs> I don't know. When me and Jay and Polk went on the road in the Northeast, he had to go to the bathroom like twice an hour. 
I relate. Us- I relate to that. Really? <laughs> I, know, I always have to go to the bathroom. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't stop a car now, but I think it took us like six hours bar. to get from Providence to Boston because oh, Jay had to no. go to the bathroom. Oh, that's so much. Yeah, that's you- horrific time. Oh <laughs> my he's, god. He's a senior citizen. He's an old man. He's got a <laughs> he's got a dookie, dude. Oh, I thought he god. was doing needle drugs. I assumed he had a crippling drug addiction and he had to go to the bathroom all the time. Yeah. But no, just yeah, bad no. wiping. No, it's just because Polk was there, and you thought you thought Polk was a needle. Yeah, very good. Polk's a Thank little you. baby. He's small. <laughs> <laughs> um, damn. Yeah, Sam, I heard I heard you on Marin. Great job, and I loved. Uh, he I liked really you, enjoy- which Marin liked you, yeah. which he like never. Yeah. He's, he's always like, all right. So what? What do you fucking do? What's your fucking? You wrote like a book. I think it's because yeah. you're an author and not a and like he, you know. I think he respects authors, but if you're like just a younger comic, he'd be like, all right, what the fuck? Who are you? You know what I mean? Also, he's like, been yeah. like interviewing like Michael J. Fox and Glenn Close. It's like, all right, so what, you were Teen Wolf? Walk me through this. I yeah. think he was just glad to have someone in the room, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. Yeah, Zoom um, WTF seems like it's kind of like the point of the show is you're in a fucking, you're in that garage and you're like talking yeah. to him. I couldn't do it, man. I drove out there. I was in LA for 36 hours. How how was yeah, it? how what was the experience like? Was he was he cool? He was great. He was very generous with me. He was incredibly kind. He sent nice. books to my house afterward. He texted me on Christmas. I mean, great guy. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Solid, man. That's awesome. That's very that's very refreshing to hear. I I can see why he'd like the book too, because yeah. it's like it's a similar like uh, like my favorite shit of Marin was like old comedy story like war stories he would tell on yeah. the old, those old WTFs and your your book kind of does that. It feels like I'm reading like great war stories from like a it's like a comics biography that nobody knew it's kind of interesting well thank you guys i appreciate that let's quit talking about my book <laughs> well, I, yeah, actually, well, I, I had one about... i had one question about the book <laughs> oh, i had one You're question right. okay so was it fun to write no uh it's um there's a lot of like cocaine it made me like think of like it's there's a lot of like, cocaine and, and booze use and stuff like that like do you do like a lot of hard drugs and stuff like that? Like, how'd you no, get in that mindset? I quit smoking weed even. Joe's going to fucking shit his pants. I quit smoking weed. I mean, I'll still, I, I did on New Year's Eve shotgun 33 beers. So like, That's I'm still cool. yeah. But uh, I, they were yellow bellies too, man. I was on those Colorado Kool-Aids. Dalton oh, damn. Best. That's Dalton's fucking favorite. Yeah. yeah the course, the course yellow bellies are the tastiest. They're creamy. They're perfect. Yeah. But yeah, man, I mean, I've never really done a lot of cocaine. I've done cocaine enough to know it makes me nervous, but I don't mm. like enjoy it. I hang out yeah. with a lot of scumbags who pound that shit, though. Yeah. The yeah you're, house. Look, you're looking at one of them right right there, Robbie. Robbie, you're a little Versus... dopo? Yeah. No, what are you talking addict. about? Shut up. Wow. No, I'm <laughs> that is not true at all. No, <laughs> we, we wanted to bring Sam on, but yeah, this is an intervention and it needs to be addressed. It's Robbie really definitely wasn't me. dressed as Waluigi when I saw him do cocaine. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> the vault is That's open. That's what you guys were doing. <laughs> Don't, Robbie, you can... Don't you're gonna point to a drug user on the show and it's not Joe? <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? What the fuck is? Oh yeah, I guess Joe would be the. <laughs> Honestly, was you're just trying to head. alpha me. I hate every time we have a guest. No, 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 no. tries to fucking I'm, alpha me. I'm sorry, Robbie. I'm sorry. I didn't mean. I just it's what sticks in my head is that you were dressed as Waluigi. I don't know. That's funny to me, dude. You were like, what? And then... was yeah, he, Joe. Joe my, always looks like a, Waluigi. It's not a regular thing. I did not. It was like Halloween. In the, I know, you know. I know. Oh, it was an in, Arbor Day. I assumed it was Halloween. Yeah. Dude in the costume. <laughs> just the, the the visual of Waluigi doing cocaine. That's why I did it. I knew it would be a good bit for later. It's God damn it, Dalton. I'm never hanging out with you again. It. If these. You shouldn't. <laughs> I'm a bad friend. <laughs> I'm selfish. I'm narcissistic. All right, Dalton. I, I... <laughs> all right, all right. I, see, this is what he does. You give him a valid criticism. He's like, I know I'm the worst. I'm, I'm an evil, I'm a piece of shit. Someone just fucking kill me already. It's like, no, Dalton, yeah, dude, just I'm don't call me a drug. Head. Don't call me a I'm... drug addict because I did drugs once and I dressed as Waluigi. I guess you're right. <laughs> you're not a drug addict. I just remember the Waluigi thing, and that's why I called you out. Instead, Joe's the real drug addict. 
<laughs> it's, called, it's a drug connoisseur. <laughs> yeah. Drug is Joe is yeah. what you might call a cocaine sommelier. Yes, a, a little nip here and there instead of a cup of coffee. A snow no, I, like I a yeah, snow, nothing, a snow nothing makes me feel like I'm on the set of Wolf of Wall Street than than doing cocaine in the middle Here's of the, the day. Cocaine. I could never get addicted to it because it, it does rock in the moment, but it just sucks so bad coming down in a way that's Doggy. like worse than like Adderall or hangovers or anything. I just know I'm like, this sucks so bad. Like, and, and it actually sticks with me how bad it is. I'm like hangovers. I'm like, Lexapro. I'm good to go again. Man. You know, you got to get some five. Room. You got to get that five HTP, man. You take some of that. It helps. No, keep it out your I don't want to get used to a cocaine come down. I, I don't want to. That that doesn't need to be a habit of mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, Last time I did yeah. cocaine was off the tip of a sword. And I only did it because people were doing it off of a sword. That is awesome. They have See, they have cocaine yeah. in it's just like me and Waluigi. There's certain scenarios where you just got to do cocaine. You have no choice. Yeah. But you have, yeah. The universe yeah. is telling you. Uh, who had the sword? I don't. I'm not. I'm not like Dalton. I'm not going to snitch on everybody. Yeah, right? dude. <laughs> yeah. It was a. Uh, cut out that whole chunk. No, no, no. You're Dalton, like... you're in your head. You know, I'll tell you who it was. Remember Kid and Play? Oh. Was it Christopher Reed? It was Christopher Kid Reed, yeah. Oh, he was a staple at the Dallas Hyenas. That's I awesome. bet it was him and Chinaman all the time. True or false? True. Uh <laughs> no, Chinaman, Chinaman had already kind of been phased out, Wait, I think. There was the a comic it. named Chinaman. You don't know about Chinaman? No, oh, no, yeah, no, 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 Oh China my Man. god, Robbie. This is where you gotta work the, the road. The goatee, right? <laughs> He's got the the three braided things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. China man was he was done by the time I started. <laughs> what an awesome name. Although in his defense, that's a weird slur because it's just like it's kind of an easy thing to oh, say. Oh, he's not Chinese. He's not Chinese. He's, he's, not, he's not Chinese, Chinese. but he does no, tell no, no, no. joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he would go on stage and be like, when he, hey, wait, hey, is that, uh, word is of that advice. Coke? When you go to see him, do not order the Coca-Cola. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Because that's yeah, his closer. <laughs> he's not Chinese, and he does. He has the host do ten minutes, and then he does like an hour and thirty minutes of comedy, <laughs> and he crushes, of work. course, because you know all the Chinaman addicts are there. But God, he quit. He has a different name now. Do you know what it is, Dalton? I can't it's remember. The, it's like Pollock. Yeah, I, yeah. Because I, I think I remember hearing about him and looking him up. And yeah, he did change it to something, but yeah, uh, I missed the Chinaman years. I think, I think that calling yourself Chinaman had gone out of fashion by the time I started comedy like seven years ago. Mark yeah. Britton is an American comedian from Texas whose chosen yeah, stage name is the Chinaman. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wasn't there yeah. another one? There was another one called like golden rice. Am I making that up? I don't know. I didn't hear about I, golden rice. <laughs> I remember there being a, a comic named Golden Rice, but I could be wrong. I mean, yeah. Maybe that's just me being racist. I don't think that's inherently racist. A lot of cultures enjoy golden rice. No, uh, no he's a Vietnamese comic from Mississippi. Oh okay. my god. <laughs> golden rice. <laughs> that's just what Dalton calls Andrew Yang. <laughs> yeah, golden rice. That, that, that's golden how you say one thing. of the good ones about a Chinese person. Yeah. Oh, he's a golden <laughs> rice. Oh, he's a tall golden <laughs> he's rice. He's a gold. No, 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 no. He's a golden rice. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I just I just got this DVD of this movie called The Tuxedo. It's got a real good golden rice in it. <laughs> I remember yeah, being I so... Baby. Here's the thing about me. I was so excited for the movie The Tuxedo that I bought the book, the novelization of The Tuxedo. <laughs> And I read Whoa. the whole thing. And then I saw the movie and was really disappointed. <laughs> I have no Did idea you guys why. See that there's, um, there's a documentary coming out about that, about like uh, movie novelizations. No. Like a, yeah, about like how there's like these obscure novelizations for even more obscure movies, like movies you wouldn't think of. I remember when I was a kid, I had the novelization for the mummy returns i had the ace ventura one 
I also had the novelization of the No Doubt album, Tragic Kingdom. What? How do you novelize can an I, album? Can you still get that? I don't know, dude. You might be able to find it online. But yeah, it like uh, it wove all the uh, the subtext of their songs into a, a narrative, dude. And I remember reading it and being like, this fucking rules. This is dude, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, she I, is just a girl. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no doubt, no, I no get doubt it. is. I am just getting into No Doubt in my adult life, and they're great. They're like really Tragic good. Tragic Kingdom's a perfect album, dude. Front to back, just so much fun. I'm with I, you I on really, that one. Yeah. The what? Just to put a pin in this. The novel, the the weird obscure novelizations that I read a bunch of were the Malcolm in the Middle uh, novelizations. I read a ton of Malcolm oh, oh in the Middle books. That's, oh, that's funny. Yeah. Have you guys Which, been seeing a lot of uh, Malcolm in the Middle like revisionist history, where everyone says that was such an important show? No. No. Oh my god. I remember my mom liked it just because the mom on that show was a massive fucking bitch. The <laughs> mom was like, the mom was like oh, that's how important should be. I'm like, why? Because she's a fucking bitch and her family hates her. You're like, get out of here. I hate I that can show. see why because it's it was like a they were like a poor family, which you don't yeah. see that much on TV. Yeah, because um, it was Roseanne and then them. I gotta tell you this, man. I just did the math on this. John Goodman being on Roseanne got me laid so much as a fat guy wearing flannel shirts in like 2004 because all those girls who watched that show came of age right around then they wanted to fuck john goodman they wanted to fuck john goodman dude yeah that was their idea of masculinity yeah Yeah, exactly father that was their father like yeah this man looks like he would be my father Mm -hmm. i want to have sex with him yeah interesting Yeah. You know what's funny about Malcolm in the Middle is like every episode, if you like look at the descriptions, it's always like one really serious plot and one like cartoonish plot. Like it's always like Malcolm comes to terms with his friend's divorce and realizes he needs to be there for him. How uh, roller skates into a, into a cow's ass. You know, it, yeah. it was always like it, it was it was always like super grounded and super cartoony. So maybe maybe that's why people think it's like important. They had or an whatever. A plot and a B plot. But mm. the plots never seem like they're from the same show. The B plot seemed like a cartoon all the time. And the A plot seemed like it was like an after school special. You know? I don't know. I, I'm just saying, I mean, like, there should be a, the there should be a Malcolm in the middle ground. Uh, I see. Oh, God, dude. What, are you long, serious? Long, you guys are leaving me long. hanging. I had no choice. I was being left hanging. Robbie, I like that kind of thing, but I don't want you to get used to it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, that snack did not have any nutritional value, but it tasted really good. Thank it's you, like thank most you. of my act. Yeah. It's yeah. My you know what? I didn't see it going in that direction. And I got to say, well done. Caught me by surprise. I, w- I was literally trying to make a point about Malcolm in the middle and I realized I'm losing him. Let me do this Uh-oh. fucking stupid thing to say. That wasn't part of your master plan. No, no, no. But I am going to close with that when comedy comes back. That wasn't one of okay. your Machiavellian puppeteer moves that we've all grown Absolutely so accustomed not. to? No, I was backed into a corner and my, uh, you know, my devious, my, my 10 years of comedy activated my sense to say Malcolm in the middle ground to get out of that uh, pickle. <laughs> um, I, I will say this because uh, this, this is the first this is the first I've ever met Sam. Uh, I find him to be delightful, but I feel like I bonded with you. You didn't even know it, dude. Just hearing you mention the the band Lightning Bolt got my dick hard, man. Yes, I, brother. Yes, indeed. Yeah, so important. I, I fucking I haven't listened to all of their albums, but that album Hyper Magic Mountain, That's I've right. listened to a lot. Man, I I'll really tell you this: that album. I have said a lot of very inflammatory things on podcasts. Me saying ACDC sucked. Boy, did I catch hell for that, dude. Fucking dude. idiots love ACDC. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. Oh, They're man. like Van Halen, like that kind of thing. I, I actually, I, They're one of those I ones I liked in middle graphs. school, but I never revisit. It's fucking bar 1 a.m. meathead shit. You know what I mean? Well, I got... Uh, I, and I like ACDC. Me, no. me and White Cotton. Did you call it Gay CDC, the... Robbie? Gay, <laughs> gay, gay she... DC. <laughs> Joe woke that's up what, for that one. That's what you say when you meet a. Uh... <laughs> it's the first thing Joe said in twelve minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what you uh, say when you meet a lesbian in Washington D.C. Gay she D.C. Oh, a gay nice. she. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you. But, there we um, go. Yeah, me and. All right, we're back. Know, we're back. We're back. We're back. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's the kind of clever humor the Loud Boys is known for. <laughs> gay C D C. Gay she DC. Gay she DC. 
That'd be a good name for a lesbian bar in DC. I'll I'll give that to fucking Ellen. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I picked the this only lesbian we know. <laughs> yeah, let's like through our lesbian Rolodex. Hmm, yeah. Ellen, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, Ellen. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, ACDC yeah, uh, sucks. Yeah, so White Cotton, me and White Cotton started talking about that. I don't know how we got into that conversation, uh, but I've got paragraphs of texts from White Cotton trying to sell me on ACDC. Me too, brother. <laughs> me too. Yeah. He went public with it. He took it to Twitter. He blasted my ass on Twitter about ACDC rocking and rolling. And that's why I asked you how old he was, because I didn't know if the, you know, the fucking VFW cut off his meds or what it was. <laughs> <laughs> he well, was I mean, wiling. I gave, you know, I'm, I'm not the kind of guy, like, I always Jay is a sucked. VFW, a very funny writer. Nice. More clever well humor done. from Robbie Goodwin on this episode. Joe goes back to bed. <laughs> Just <laughs> a <laughs> thousand more years of sleep for Joe. He's like a... <laughs> Joe's like the great gazoo. <laughs> His work here is done. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I always thought they kind of sucked, and White Cotton was selling them so hard. I was like, yeah. all right, fine. I mean, I'll watch these YouTube uh, links you sent me. One of them, the, the actual performance was lively. Like, I was like, that's a cool performance. And then I listened to the album High Voltage, and I was like, there's only one track on here that doesn't sound like every other song. <laughs> That's my issue. It's very, very redundant. It all sounds the exact same. But I don't mm. want your legions of uh, fifty-five-year-old widowers to fucking come at me. So <laughs> yeah, you know. ACDC oh yeah, rules. that's like Marin's like fucking demo, dude. Holy shit! It's a shit. bunch of Dean oh, Del Rey's. Yeah. Every Dean Del Rey enthusiast <laughs> in America. <laughs> what, hey, dude, what the hell you say about ACDC, man? They rock hard. <laughs> I'm four foot eight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh man. I don't know oh, what fuck. it is about that kind of music for me. Maybe maybe I am trying too hard to be different. But anytime I hear somebody say like their favorite band is something that pl regularly plays on classic rock radio, I'm just like, you don't know any. You stopped listening to music is what happened. Yeah, yeah. It's like I, someone's favorite back book is Fight it. Club. Yeah, I've been getting back into like dad rock. Like I've been listening to like a lot of Pink Floyd lately. They're great. That's just because you've been smoking weed, man. Yeah, and yeah, I, I got weird. high and I was like, whoa, welcome to the machine. Like a job. Whoa. <laughs> they were trying to <laughs> us, man. <laughs> Wish you were here, yeah. but but what about dead people? Oh, <laughs> I'm going to cry. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. It really hits like that. I almost cried listening to that song when I was really high <laughs> on Saturday. Nice. <laughs> The first man ever to be moved by te to tears. From well, because I went on YouTube. I was high as shit on Saturday. I was like, I went on YouTube and I was listening to Wish You Were Here. And it's all the comments are about dead people. Like all these commenters, like my cousin was <laughs> like, like, like stories about death. And I'm like, yeah. Jesus Christ. I always thought this song was just about how like you're on vacation or something. <laughs> like I, had not, I didn't, I didn't know it like resonated that deeply with me. But that's like the cool like thing about music, man, is like it can mean one thing when you're younger and then. You understand yeah. it has a deeper significance at later stages in your life when you have different right. points of reflection. But that doesn't take away from the significance it held for you when you first listened to it and thought it meant one thing. That's yeah, yeah. yeah. That that uh, is why music is infinitely better than comedy because oh, like course. comedy is always just yeah. Comedy is the opposite. Comedy you, sucks. Like dude, let's be real. I music tried to listen to it. <laughs> yeah. Imagine, yeah, listening to like David Cross, his original albums again. I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, this sucks. Like, it's a lot of like, this fucking yeah, Bush I, guy I am... is dumb. <laughs> it's like, it's a lot of that. You want to hear something? This might, this might be an embarrassing music moment for me, similar to what you just described. Cause I remember the last, the, the last time I went to see Primus, uh, I got high and cried during the concert. You know, I was like, this is so beautiful. What and song was like, it? Sergeant Baker? The South Park theme. <laughs> 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 no, dude. It was, they, it was uh, too many puppies. No, <laughs> like, they were Damn it, man. <laughs> what if they, you had too many puppies? Where would you put them? <laughs> no, dude. So they were touring the, the album they just released, the Desaturating 7. And so they opened the show with like a few hits. It was like too many puppies, Sergeant Baker, shit like that. And then they just, for the next 40 minutes, played that entire new album. And I was like, this is beautiful. Mm. <laughs> and I start crying. 
Look, man, Primus fucking rules. I don't hear Primus any. Rocks. I don't want to hear any anti-Primus talk in this podcast. No, Primus oh, is no. good. I have nothing bad. I I fucking love Primus. Wait, no, we should don't. have Sam weigh in. How do you feel about the Red Hot Chili Peppers? I'm not well versed enough in the well Red Hot Chili Peppers to have an opinion. I only know their radio hits. Damn. Well, we should start asking every guest that because that's been a big saga. If if they're good yeah, or not, <laughs> that that was that was a big turnaround for me because Robbie was always trying to sell me on Red Hot Chili Peppers, and I always just kind of I wasn't even them. really I wasn't giving you a hard sell because I do think that a lot of their music is kind of annoying. But I was like, they they have some good songs. I here's the reason I always hated them, and it's a very superficial reason, and it's like me uh, choosing a side for no reason is that. Uh, Mr. Bungle always hated them. And I was mm. like, well, I'm not going to turn my back on Mr. Bungle and all of a sudden start liking the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And Mr. Then... Bungle couldn't be a worse. It, there's no listenable. At least it, it, I can't get into Mr. Bungle. Uh, I like them. I mean, I understand like when, yeah, if you put on something like any of those albums, <laughs> I guess, except for the newest one, which is just like a thrash album. I mean, my is thing a, about Red Hot Chili Mrs. Peppers Bungle? is... <laughs> okay nice <laughs> not bad <laughs> did he do naked city that was john zorn okay yeah mm. and i think mike Patton was attached to that okay because i mean i like the idea of like sex magic but i'm much more of a blood sugar guy yeah that's my <laughs> issue i've had way more experience with blood sugar than sex yeah. magic in my mm-hmm. life i still <laughs> that's, funny. Patient, yeah. that's good <laughs> thanks robbie thank you <laughs> I've been anointed by the king. Yeah. The king of clever. <laughs> the king of quips. Robbie Goodwin. Yeah, dude. Um, what, what are we doing now? <laughs> feels, like we hit, feels like we hit a little bit. Wait, how about, how about the Mars Volta? Oh. I never, no, I no. never got into them. At the drive-in Our- was very cool. Hmm. <laughs> Damn, now Robbie's blowing up my spot. Because... Uh, I've talked extensively on this show about how much I love the Mars Volta. A fan just DM me today and they're like, I would love to talk to Dalton about the Mars Volta. And I was like, you can easily, he will talk to you about that. Hey, whoever whoever that is, DM me and we will talk, my friend. Yeah. I was like, what if it was a girl? That'd be nuts. It's hey, it's not the craziest thing that has ever Sam, happened. Sam, that is the craziest thing. A girl Mars Volta fan? Come on. <laughs> Jesus. You're not, next you're gonna tell me Bigfoot DM'd me. I don't know, man. Hope things are turning. <laughs> I don't know, man. That's a good time. That's a good way to fill some negative space, Dalton. Just yeah, just give it up for uh, the idea of anything. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I love not only just not laughing at my joke to be like, I, I don't know about that. That doesn't. I don't. <laughs> that doesn't check out with my facts. I just <laughs> didn't like you. I didn't like you saying that. Uh, it's so far fetched that there might be a girl who enjoys the same music. Okay, I do. a lot of the music you like has like eighty percent guy fans though. Like Tool, I love Tool. Yeah, myself. dude, these are incel but, jams, baby. Just incel, a, it is yeah. what it is. It's four yeah. chan music. Yeah, dude, it's fine. But like, come on, man. The idea that a beautiful woman would like that kind of music too is absolutely laughable. And Robbie was right to make fun of you. You ever go, because I like hip hop. So it's a lot of the same kind of thing where it's a lot of dudes and like a, some girlfriends. There's some girlfriends in the crowd. And that's about grudgingly it. going, dude. Yeah. Dude, it's one like, time it's I, like, I went like to go asking, see. Like, hope, yeah, that's like a chick hoping like maybe this guy will really like the Backstreet Boys. Maybe that's his favorite out, uh, band. And it's I went rare. to go see. Uh, I went to go see Danny Brown and um, it was all psychotic Zoomers. Like I felt very out of place. And I saw a girlfriend, boy, it was all dudes, but there was one girlfriend, boyfriend, but they were both dressed as the Joker, which was terrifying. <laughs> it was so scary. <laughs> That's like any girl who goes to a live podcast recording. Oh, yeah. She, has, yeah. she does not want to be there. She's upset. Yeah. A She's lot of get folded a arms. Ottoman out of this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, dude. I've yeah, seen I... shit like that where like on Reddit, there'll just be a guy like, should I bring my girlfriend to the uh, to the racist podcast show? <laughs> it's like, and they're all like, "Go for it, dude! Definitely!" Like, I could not <laughs> think of a worse date idea than like a two and a half hour podcast recording. Dude, live podcasting is where podcast starts to remind me of like a almost like a how the housing bubble, or it's like it's getting too big. <laughs> yeah. it's, like, it's like when I was 
<laughs> when I was living in Dallas, I remember uh, the Doughboys came to, and played the Majestic Theater, and I'm like, "What the? F- You're gonna go watch these two fat fucks talk about Waterburger?" <laughs> dude, the, those sell out. You know what's the a sign of times that that shit sells out way more than like stand up these days. I know, dude. dude. It's yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, like um, the uh, I mean, I guess he's a celebrity, so it doesn't really count. But Kevin Smith, like the only show at the Hollywood Improv that like kept set, like that was like a guarantee, like it was sold out every single week, was his fucking Smodcast Live or whatever. Uh, uh, Hollywood Babylon, that show. It, but it was always fucking packed every single week, it was, it, which is great, which is just crazy. Yeah, dude. All Where, whereas it get like fucking fans. nights where like Rogan was on the lineup and it wouldn't sell out or whatever. So it, it, it's it's pretty nuts. So that the weird thing though is you know when it does seem like that's the way things are going and like leaving stand up behind like live podcasting, it is funny because it's like live podcast, like stand up takes so much more work to develop and get good at than just like sitting down and just shooting shit. For and you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that, Dalton. <laughs> I don't know about that. That doesn't check out. Uh, let me fact check that with some uh, phone voice memos of my sets at the creek in the cave. R.I.P. Rest in peace. R.I.P. to the defunct venue that I have a tattoo of. Whoa, no yep. way, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Good. No, he, he's got it. I got it. <laughs> I got it over my heart to cover up the swastika. It was free. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys talked me out of that because I'm I'm so down to get bad tattoos. And when they when they hit me up asking if I was really gonna do it, I was like, Yeah, sure. And you guys were like, please don't do that. <laughs> the funniest like, thing was Claire posted like if you're really serious about getting this tattoo, like this comment. And the first like was from Joe. <laughs> it was like, there's no way he is serious <laughs> about getting that tattoo. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. And then I was like in a group chat with everyone that was going to get the tattoo. And they're like, we're all going to go. And I'm like, oh, okay. That's not happening for me, man. I'm going to be buried in a Jewish cemetery, baby. Get out of town. Yeah, man. Is that out of spite? Yeah. You're gonna get buried in there so you can be surrounded by your enemies. <laughs> <laughs> an, alpha, an alpha to the end, a bully to yeah. the end. <laughs> bully yeah, to dude. The, yeah, dude, for all eternity. I'm gonna to die. Die. His epitaph he, he, says Woody Allen sucks <laughs> on his fucking <laughs> gravestone. <laughs> Seinfeld was overrated. <laughs> you just hear a bunch of like fucking Jewish skeletons tossing and turning. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was revolutionary. <laughs> um, mm. Sam, did you ever think about moving to New York? You seem like you're doing great in Denver, but yeah. Uh, I mean, as a young man, I did, but Denver was just you know you got a bunch of stage time and you got paid, so I never wanted to leave. And then I met my wife like nine years ago, and I've just been attached to her whole med school into doctor thing. So oh hell yeah, I don't know, man. It seems cool, but then like I talked to Kevin O'Brien, and it's like oh god, what happened? Yeah. What happened to you, Kevin? Are you go- are you going to be okay? Mm. I know oh, a lot yeah, of people in... who it's ruined. Should we move? Oh, to yeah. York? Should we move to Denver? No, man. I mean, you guys live in New York. You live in like the apex of culture. I'm uh, envious of anyone who's ever lived in New York. I think it's very cool. Yeah, yeah. Denver well, seems great. York... My, I have friends who just moved. I'm going to a wedding there in August, so um, it seems like a great spot. It it's like. Uh, it's like uh, San Francisco without the pretension. I've never been there, but it seems like, you know, like chill, pretty liberal, like good crowds. A lot of people's best tapes, I feel like, are from that Denver comedy works. Yeah, I mean, we have the we had the best comedy scene in the country for a while. I mean, as far as stage time and, uh, you know, just quality of stage time, I was very grateful to be from Denver. But, you know, I don't know. I flirted with moving to L.A. when I was young and then. I don't know. I had to lie about JFL because they were like, are you ever going to move to L.A. or New York? And I was like, no. And then I auditioned five years in a row. And finally, on the sixth year, I was like, definitely, we're moving to L.A. or New York. And then I got it. You know, I just don't understand why it's supposed to be so important to live out there. I'll say um, this. Most of my favorite comics are from New York. I don't really enjoy any L.A. comedy. Yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, that's I sure. agree. I, I will say like. I I I, lo- I enjoy the comics I see around in New York, even just like on my level, way fucking more than the comics I would see around in L.A. No, no offense. I mean, there's good people out there, but it's like, like I'll look through like old, uh, like I'll look through like you know old people I knew in L.A. And be like, ah, I still fucking hate that guy, hate that guy, hate that guy. <laughs> Whereas like, 
in New York, I'm, you know, it's aggressive in your, when you're talking to people, but it's a lot more like, Oh man, that, that's a funny person. Funny person. Doing funny person. comedy in New York is just a treat. Cause, um, it's not hard to get around for anyone. So you definitely see some fuck, like really crazy people show up at open mics who mm-hmm. otherwise wouldn't be able to go to open mics. Cause they'll, they don't know how to drive. Wait guys, so- breaking news. Kanye and Kim are getting a divorce. Nice. Oh. Yeah. Back on the market, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Joe, you're in. I'm going to suck <laughs> Kanye West's dick. Kim did say Joe is, if I were only single, to Joe. I was there when it happened. Yeah. Damn, to, Kim, to Kim's credit, this is long overdue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like five five r- marriage running. Dude, like she Kanye. did her best. Kim is an angel, honestly, because she stuck by him through a lot. <laughs> yeah, dude, I was like, this is the most ride or die bitch of all time. I... But yeah, dude, that this the shit Kanye pulled, and I love Kanye. I would never say a bad word about him. But the shit he was like pulling this summer was so fucking nuts. I have a fun word you can say about him. What is it? it has six letters in it. What is it? Start. <laughs> never mind. I don't want to. I I can't commit to this. Well, bit. at least I didn't have the bit that bombed the hardest on this show. <laughs> so <That's true>. there <laughs> we go. <laughs> like if I had any balls, I would have just said the word. But I don't want a recording of me saying it. But hey, theater of the mind, everybody. Just think of the N word. Yeah. I, it's Low been in- good to be here, guys. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah. this this prank call I accidentally opened somehow on Zoom. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> uh, nah, dude, I'm uh, feeling it, dude. My uh, my brain hurts, but I'm feeling it. It seemed like you bounced back. I bounced back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. Re- you were. You said earlier. You were like. You mentioned that I'm in my own head, and it's like couldn't nothing could be true right now i'm wait yeah. i have something to say yeah. about what you said earlier yeah what's up theater where they talk of the mind what you're saying black know. people talk in a movie theater <laughs> you said theater oh, of the mind oh, about the hour. <laughs> okay i get it yeah um yeah. Three, theater theater of the mighty damn business <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, we're back. <laughs> the read your book of the mind. <laughs> read your damn book of the mind. Yeah. Meanwhile, hey, Joe's speak- just playing League of Legends. What are you doing down oh, there? Oh dude, Joe? I'm looking at pictures of Kim Kardashian. It's okay. funny. It's funny. <laughs> Joe always pulls back, but he's by far the most racist in person. <laughs> <laughs> going to say anything on the record dude yeah i'm gonna cut that out I mean, i'll cut out you saying the n-word and we'll cut out me my joke that joke bombing i never no, said we'll the leave the word. whole thing in dude i'm live streaming this on twitch <laughs> <laughs> but on anthony cumia's twitch so we're fine yeah on anthony cumia's twitch <laughs> on the <laughs> so we just got a ton of new viewers in the yeah. last in the last 30 seconds <laughs> dude we got we got a nice yeah we got a nice little alt-right bump yeah, we good, did. good for yeah, us. We're, we're we've earned good, it. Man. Yeah. Thank you to Damn. Gas Digital. Yeah, Dalton but... just are you going back on the real ass podcast tomorrow? I'm gonna be there tomorrow, dude. What are you gonna do? You have to like one up now. You have to like kill Dylan. I guess so. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to kill somebody to yeah. top that last show. It's What'd like you what do? Co- I, I, I we had a we had a real <laughs> like classic wait, what did Joe say? He said you said the N word. Oh yeah, I said the N word. No, we just had a, I went on the show and just kind of organically, it became one of those like old school stern radio drama, <laughs> situ- like a, like a lot of drama happened that day. Cause one of Lewis's producers was like losing his mind. He was like flipping shit and I bullied him to the point where he had to be escorted out of the studio. Yeah. He, he started so crying. At me. Yeah. yeah. He oh. started crying and but, yeah, but Dalton was- got nominated for real ass guest of the year. <laughs> Mm-hmm. and real ass episode of the year yep lost that's... both awards but to honored to be nominated yeah dude that is cool yeah man it just as long as you're on the radar mm-hmm. the real ass radar <laughs> oh, i'm We're trying to find to... i'm trying to find you on instagram right now it's at salty dalty 69 420 <laughs> <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> I found him. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh my god. 
Yeah, I don't know. That whole real ass uh, situation is weird to me because like I'm friends with Shane Gillis and that's pretty much as close as I get to that whole, you oh, know, yeah. I guess Soder. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Luis, Luis Gomez is weird to me. I mean, yeah, he's kind of weird to everybody, but he's a fun guy. No, he seems yeah. fun. He seems like a guy you'd want to hang out with a bar at a barbecue. I just like don't understand how he kind of exploded in the way that he has. Oh, it doesn't make any sense. That's why I'm like so fascinated by that whole world. Cause like talking to him, you're just like, damn dude, you own a business. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It is weird. Nothing about him screams business owner. Well, (laughs) no, he is. He is often screaming though. (laughs) And and fuck that guy who tweeted as do not disparage Lewis J Gomez. I'll just like, come on, dude. The guy is, he really is. He's like uh, the, the boss on the Flintstones, the, I will say this. I'm I'm gonna I'm going on the record. Louis J. Gomez is my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> He's always well, been a sweetheart to me, and and I never felt like I truly belonged in New York until Louis J. Gomez uh, saw me outside of the stand, and he said, "Gorman, you live here now?" And I said, "Yes." And he was like, "Great," and that was all I needed. Yep. <laughs> And that fulfills Joe's one thing he says every 20 minutes, guys. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thank you very much. I can tell Joe, Joe must be high out of his gourd this episode because he, he gets kind of quiet when he's a little too stoned. Yeah. Oh, Thanks for some times. <laughs> Thanks huh? for picking up the slack, Sam. I hey, mean, Sam? I don't know. I'm just trying to have fun with the fellas. Yeah, yeah, yeah man, fun, that's, all, dude, all, that's all this is, man. Sometimes people get on here I, and they try to push their agenda. They're like, oh, I'm going to fucking get on the loud boys and I'm going to make people fucking want to vote for fucking Joe Biden or I'm going to get on the loud boys. Dude, the worst everyone- was that guy who was like, I'm going to set off a bomb in a truck in Nashville. What the fuck happened to that yeah. guy? <laughs> <laughs> what happened, man? Yeah, Anthony Quinn, on, dude? I think his name was. It was Nate Bargatze. <laughs> I remember like a year, like a couple of years ago, we had TJ Miller on and he was telling us, he said, I'm going to call in a bomb threat to Amtrak. And we were like, Hey, this would, what a fucking yeah. bit, man. Dude, as long as, and we were, I was like, actually going to do it. Yeah, dude. I was like, yeah, you crazy rat. I mean, after the bottle in the pussy, I was like, well, that's like a step down. Yeah. <laughs> I was <Right>. like, uh, <laughs> at least it's just a threat. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks that TJ is pure evil because he was so oh, good shit. to me. I'm sorry. I forgot you're like friends with him. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I wasn't until he lost his mind and then, you know, raped that lady 10 years ago. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know, yeah. Dude. I'm going to rape you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you guys see his special? Did you see his special? Yeah. Yeah. A little what bit. A trash. I wish I could yeah. take it back knowing what he did. Yeah, that was. I, I wish think I that was the worst all those crime. Laps back. I, I, I saw wish, him. I regret every funny laugh I gave that guy. The funniest <laughs> thing about man. TJ, the guys who get me to and are still like, like soapbox liberals are, are the funniest. He's like, Mr. President, you are not fit for office. It's like, dude, come on, man. Like, who's does listening he do to you? That? Yeah, he does. He does like a lot of like liberal soapboxing on, on really? stage but, too. And but stuff. he raped yeah. a woman. How can you say that? I know. Trump should be his king. Bad like, man. He, Trump's Trump the one guy. Error. Let me tell you. Trump's something. the one guy who got me too and still has a career. Let me tell hey, you, something. Robbie. You, you, you guys, rape a woman. You don't tell my boy Donald J how to do his job. Exactly. <laughs> Wait, I want. I want to hear more about Sam's relationship with TJ. Do you talk yeah. to him at all anymore? Did he rape you? <laughs> Did he rape you? Did you shove a bottle up your ass? Did you see him do anything? It was a two liter. That was the. Was worst it not part. your? Was it not your place to say? Was it not your fight to have? <laughs> and that's why he didn't say anything. Yeah, that was so yeah. weird, dude. I don't know. He was very good to us. He was also an amazing live stand-up comedian. He yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. I loved I his watching first special him. in like 2011. I thought it was like amazing. Yeah, I don't know. He, I, you know what happened, dude, is he like had that brain aneurysm in like 2008, 9, or 10, and now he thinks he's dead and that this is heaven and he can do whatever he wants. Whoa. So you can yeah. rape in heaven? No, the, the rape <laughs> happened allegedly in like when he was in college. You know what I mean? So um, wait, you knew him. You knew him well, before. Well, then he the... wouldn't get into heaven. So I don't understand. I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> I'm trying to keep that too. <laughs> I don't know uh, what Joe's doing. Joe, <laughs> I don't know what the bit Joe, is, man. Joe, nothing's worse than being high and trying to do heaven math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joe's, yeah, Joe's doing heaven math. Because it's like, okay, so like, All right, who's like, getting in? Who's yeah. not? Okay. <laughs> Well, how is he getting into heaven if he did this horrible thing? And like in heaven, like you. No, he's do- not. At, he thinks he's in heaven because he had well, a brain yeah. in. Because I don't think you get into heaven. Have you read the Bible? I don't think you're allowed yes. to do that anymore. There's a what? lot of rape in the Bible. 
Oh, there's really? a lot of rape in the Bible. Dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, T.J. Miller, I would like to formally apologize. That's why they call it the Holy invitation. Bible. Because it's all the holes. <laughs> the glory, holy Bible. The glory, 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 holy Bible. Yeah. If TJ had done something really bad, like covet a neighbor's ox, he'd be in trouble. Yeah. My, <laughs> he my would have definitely kicked about. him off of that fucking Silicon Valley show. He would not be in heaven. That. Oh, my God. You. How have we not talked about the picture of Kumail yet? Oh, my God. Yeah. My favorite was he looks insane and people are like, um, excuse me. What's different about Kumail versus the other actors, and why are we not making fun of them? It's like because he looks insane, said, he's, dude. He looks he. There's something off about him, and it like not just how gross his body is now. But Wait, did like, he get fat again? No, he got like ripped, but in a yeah. really disturbing way. What's this photo? <laughs> oh, you haven't seen it? He's been Wait. posting. Uh, all the uh, like pictures of him having his uh, cheat meal for the week. Okay. And I think the most recent one was him like sitting next to a gingerbread house or something. And he just, it's an unsettling picture. It's like one of those, like nothing it, wrong is happening in the picture, but it feels like something is wrong. Is this on his Instagram? Um, yeah, I think so. Wait, I'll pull it up and put it, it down. It. Oh, I see it now. Yeah. It looks like he's eating like oxtails and lasagna. Yeah, yeah, that's also weird. Oh Whatever he's eating. He's doing an impression of American food. What do they like in America? <laughs> Oxtail and lasagna. That, that they would like. Emily, oh, I see this. It's, get it's me. Some... <laughs> Sorry, Robbie. I, that was a good no, no, bit. No, no. It's, uh, it's, some, it's some caseless sausage he seems to be consuming. Yeah, it's it's some kind of. I think it's uh like a uh from his home world. What? <laughs> I yeah, I don't know. <laughs> his home world. <laughs> yeah, Pakistan. <laughs> Planet Pakistan. <laughs> Planet Pakistan. He's from oh, Planet man. Pakistan. That the worst Planet Hollywood uh, style restaurant ever. <laughs> <laughs> Oh all my your, god. All your favorite Bollywood stars. <laughs> yeah, Planet Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> you, we walked him. Uh, no, I'm here. I, love... I, just, I have a wound on my leg. Oh no, what happened? Yeah. I picked a scab while I was talking. Uh, his funny guys. bone uh, got uh, <laughs> too, <laughs> too big. <laughs> yeah, I just got a cramp in my gut. Me and Sam are both <laughs> just having like fat guy injuries. I think that's a hernia, dude. <laughs> I've never had a gut cramp. That sounds bad. Yeah, that's a hernia, dude. Is it like a stretchy fucking pain? No, it's like a spasm. Is it like a shooty pain? No. Okay. Do you want to lie down? I got a cramp in my gut. I got a cramp. I got a tummy cramp. I got a cramp in my gut. Man, I got one of them fucking <laughs> tummy cramps, man. Uh, oh, man. Oh, man. Leave me alone. I got a cramp in my gut. <laughs> I don't get it, man. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Oh. Damn. Yeah. So Kumail is gross now. Why? Because he's buff and his hair rules? I don't understand the hate. Yeah. Hair's good. What did you see? Look at his jaw. He, he looks like Duke Nukem. <laughs> Someone, uh, Joe Jogan on Twitter said he looks like Thwomp. That, that was the best one. <laughs> Dude, shout out Joe Jogan. That's a good follow. He's a good he's, account. He's, he's shr- he, these are steroids. This is steroid juice, clear and cut. It looks like it looks like steroids, yeah. Yeah, but it's if ter- you got rich, why wouldn't you be on steroids? Exactly. Because hey, look, I'm not knocking him. I'm just some saying things picture... are more important than wealth. Hell, celebrities that aren't ripped wealth. infuriate me. It's like, dude, I would be ripped if I was. What about like, character famous. actors? Character actors, go, go, go for it, dude. I was just watching two movies with James Caan in it. I'm glad he looks like that. It's awesome. Yeah. I yeah, love seeing a balding so, man kick ass. So, like, let, let's be real. Untalented actors need to be. Oh, yeah. Let, yeah. How about like a Ralphie May? There's no excuse why he couldn't have lost some weight. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah but like if John yeah. Carroll Lynch lost weight, that would suck. Right, right, right. There's Hold a medium. On, let me just go to Wikipedia real quick so I can figure out who that is. Oh, you're going to see it and you're going <laughs> to say, I love this guy. Uh,. I oh, think I've blood. seen him before. Oh, I do love this guy. Told you. This guy is great from the Drew Carey show. He's a hero Fargo. for the rest of us, Dalton. Oh, that guy. Yeah. This guy. Wow, great Paul. Yeah. I, 
I just know him because he's the brother of a comedian in Denver. Uh, uh, so I look played... forward. I look forward to hearing everyone hate me on this podcast. Do you guys have an active uh, fan base that's very vocal? It's growing, but they but they they've been nice. They mostly hate me. Okay. <laughs> Well, why do you what Sam? Why do you think they'll hate you? You've been the star of this show. No, They've just because uh, I don't know. I'm a sincere guy, you know, and I've been having to do That's Joe's job thing. too, so I'm kind of tuckered out. <laughs> no, I appreciate. Honestly, dude, you you came in with some some banging jokes at first, and I go, oh, here we go. We got a riff, and I'm my brain hurts. But it turns out you're a sweet guy, and you yeah. care for me when when I uh, described my ailment. <laughs> Dalton, yeah. you can call me because I'm not. If you ever have that issue, call me up. You know. Yeah. All right. I'll be like your dad. I'll be like Sam. You, you do should... not want to. You don't want to unleash this can of worms, dude. No, Dalton, oh, call God. me, and I'll just I'll say stuff your dad would say, like we should pave Palestine or whatever. <laughs> 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 Wait, is my dad Jewish? In... Yeah. No, Sam, you, you'd have to say stuff like you think you're better than me, as you just make unbreaking <laughs> eye contact with them. <laughs> yeah. Has anyone met Dalton's yeah. dad? No, and I've heard stories. Met. Yeah, yeah, we never. Oh, dude, my dad, dude, my dad's wild, man. I, we were talking the other day, and uh, he said, "Do you do you remember when I told when when you were a kid and I told you that I would if I had the choice I would rather not exist?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he said, "You remember how upset you were?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he was like, "Why do you get so mad?" And I was like, "Cause I was like eight. Like I don't know why you would <laughs> say that to a kid." <laughs> yeah that's not good <laughs> yeah it's not that's not in dr spock i don't think damn yeah yeah my dad's my dad's a wild man he was that's in prison brutal. for a long time so how long yeah, is too long to be bleeding i've been bleeding down here for about 40 minutes you're uh -oh. you been drinking have you been drinking at all no i haven't are you taking any medication that mm. thins your blood and doesn't make it clot no it's on my Achilles tendon. That's not good. Uh oh. I don't know. Do you have a band aid? No, yeah. I'm on a podcast. Uh oh. Did, if you need to go, anything, take is there care a doctor on the podcast? My wife isn't home yet. I'm calling she's somewhere. She's somewhere. I'm calling faking, 911. She's faking COVID deaths for the extra 40 bucks. <laughs> 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 What's your address, Sam? I'm going to get an ambulance. Uh, my address is 1234 Capital Ave. Okay, one, two, three, four, capital F. San Francisco, California. San Francisco, California. <laughs> that, was David much... that was David yeah. Boy's address. Yeah, yeah I met <laughs> Sam. I met Sam because we were, we, uh, yeah, he's really good friends with David Borey, who is a good friend of my friend, Andrew Holmgren, who also said great things about your book, by the way, Sam. He loved it. Good. Um, but his parents bought him a copy. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's just not nice. That's a joke for like four people. I don't know why I did that. He'll never hear it. And if he does, he'll forget it after like oh, 20 good. minutes. But, good, good, um, good. but, uh, yeah, those old days partying at Sylvan were so much fun. I talk about that with Joe all the time. It, that was were like you better. partying? Were you partying though? I don't remember I you was. drunk ever. I, I was, yeah, I, I drank, but just I'm not being not, accusatory. I just don't remember you as a drunk guy. Uh, just not as much as everyone else. I mean, in the context of Sylvan, I was a fucking sober as a judge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you they, were an people, angel. Yeah, but dude, those some of those dirty tricks nights, dude. I was like up to like three a.m. with all those guys. Yeah, man, I remember just being there and putting codeine in a forty and mixing in Skittles. Yeah, and then shot like fucking pounding the entire thing. Ah, Jesus. And oh then Luke Lockfield, yeah. Luke Lockfield's fourteen, and he's asleep outside for way too long. Yeah, there's like a heroin addict in the fucking uh, closet. And I was yeah, like, yeah, hey, yeah. Oh, that's Zach. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. <laughs> I remember oh, one time I came back and visited. It was like, yeah, yeah, Zach's gotten into meth. <laughs> like, all right, funny. dude. Like they made a post on the Bay Area Comedy Network a few months ago, like asking what happened to Zach, and I just said like, oh, he died. <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone was like oh my god how did this happen what's going on and then like three admins from that fucking stupid group messaged me is like how do you know he died and i'm like i fucking an estimated <laughs> guess he's a fucking junkie he lives in a closet what do you yeah. think dude and still it's like been on yeah. still done stand up on tv more than me so that's, ah, that's cool well, dude. <laughs> <laughs> come on man come on man. well the important thing is he's dead it also really wasn't TV. It was Viceland, Robbie. Yeah. You can let, let it go, brother. <laughs> I, I was in Vegas with David Borey 
and someone recognized him from Vice from that show, and I was like, "Holy shit! I can't believe anyone watched hey, that." Robbie, thing. if you're still hung up on who got Viceland or who got laughs on Fox, I, I wouldn't worry about it, dude. I think you're. In the- I'm not hung up on those things specific. You. I'm hung up. I just want revenge on comedy in general, much yeah. like the Joker. <laughs> one time, Whoa. one time, me and Bori were in Vegas and we were walking, and some guy, this, these like eight Latino dudes who looked very surly, came up and they were like, "Hey, man, I saw you on Conan," and they were. He was like, "Yeah, yeah," and then one of them was like, "Holy shit, roast battle! It's roast oh battle!" God. And they lost their minds and they wanted to take a bunch of photos with me for having been on roast battle. The uh, one of the worst shows you could ever have a TV credit for, which I would kill to be on. Go ahead. <laughs> well, let me tell you, brother. It, it really, uh, it really skyrocketed my career. I'll be, I'll be at the Plano Hyenas featuring for Chinaman. <laughs> <laughs> that was a real possibility when they were open. Yeah. <laughs> uh fuck. Damn. Who the owner of the I, loony, no, you, the wait. owner of the Looney Bins called me a coward recently. Why? What happened? You're not. Is it because you wear a mask? Thank you, Joe. No, because I canceled on doing all the loony bins because That's of the pandemic. Funny. And like we went back and forth trying to readjust it. And he's like, why don't you hit me up when you're not a coward? And I was like, okay, oh, this is this is worth the eight hundred dollars. Yeah. Thank you. It's so funny how. Yeah, they uh, comedy club owner. They're, they're like such they're tough to work with personalities a lot of the time. It's like I mean, they got like this because like, they think like they have like this kind of gatekeeper-y attitude where like they're lord and master of the domain. I'm going to go to Little Rock and maybe get COVID for $800? No, yeah. thank you. Yeah. They're like bar owners if there was like thousands of people trying to work at the bar. Yeah. 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 Which is a weird combo. Well, that was um, Hyena's whole thing was it's like Hyena's Comedy Nightclub was the, the actual name of the place and his whole thing was he wanted it to feel more like a nightclub than a comedy club, I guess. That's so let's get let's of. get Steve Mudflat McGrew in here and we'll move some yeah. fucking tickets. Let's get Steve McGrew and Cowboy Bill Martin and <laughs> these sound like uh, fake people. All these people you've named. Oh no, dude. Uh Chad Prather. Oh Chad uh, Prather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> man, flap. Fucking flap, man. Now I feel left. Oh, out. dude. Mudflap was there. I think every weekend, my flap was always at hyenas. It was him, and who's that guy that Sam Kennison fucked his wife? Carl LeBeau. He oh, was always there. Yeah, that's a that's a great WTF. I used to listen to that one all the time. It's a very good one, man. How about the Norm Macdonald one where he talks about Sinbad? That's the greatest. That that's rules. the best. My favorite part of that one is he made an intern tell uh, Rodney Dangerfield a gay joke. Yeah, <laughs> that one. Not that, much that, for that jokes. Yeah. Oh, I tell you, kid, I'm not one for jokes. Yeah, check out WTF with Mark Marin. Yeah, actually, Sam's on there, so actually check it out. Yeah, <laughs> I think more uh, fun's been had on this. Oh, right, yeah, man. Are we cool? Dude, this show, Mark yeah, Marin? are we cool? Are we good? <laughs> he you didn't think ask Obama me. Obama would do our podcast for real, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's not I'll say much. this, man. Dude, I'm, I've got to. I gotta ask him about those fucking drone strikes. Honestly, <laughs> I'm gonna ask him to stop the steal. Yeah, dude, and it's like Obama. Can I'm we so sick just, of this steal. Just show us the birth certificate, dude, and like let's end this once and for all. <laughs> can you do that for us, tough guy? That was the best. Can you when do Trump's forty four? When Trump started his career and Obama showed the birth certificate, then he started bragging like, "I got him to do it. I got him to do it." <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, kudos to Trump. If, yeah, if he did show his birth certificate. I'll miss didn't him, have dude. To. I'll miss him oh, so man. much. I listen I will, to the full hour call, the full hour Georgia call. He's so it's so great. It's like a great Sopranos episode, dramatic but kind of funny. Well, there's not much to do in Menlo Park, so I understand. Yeah. <laughs> wow, how the <laughs> fuck do you remember that? God damn, Sam! I'm the king. You are the king, dude. Guys, I'm That's bleeding pretty bad. You. I have to make dinner for my wife. Oh um, yeah, sorry. Thanks for hanging out. Is- no, no, no. This was a pleasure, Robbie. Very funny as always. Joe, haven't seen you in forever. Glad to see you, pal. Good to see Looks you. Looks like you're really flourishing. And Dalton, Thanks, what a pleasure. Yeah, this was fun, man. Yeah, this yeah, was dude. fun. I appreciate you for having me. I'm not. I'm really not trying to bail. It's just it's 5:30. My wife. No, you told now. me that no, you had a 5:30 hour. No, that, this yeah. is perfect, dude. We had a perfect hour and a half long podcast, man. Perfect. Well, thank you guys yeah. very much. Um, Thanks, Sam. Is there yeah. anything you want to? You want to plug the book or anything else? I want to plug Joe's little cookie cutter with my hog. Oh. <laughs> Samuel. <laughs> so 
So watch out for that. Watch out for gay sex. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Check out Sam sodomizing Joe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, everyone. Yeah, make sure you check out Sam having gay sex with our co-host. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Casey, Casey, baby. <laughs> we didn't even get into any of the old fucking... Have me back on. We can just talk shit about those old San Francisco comics. Ah, oh, I yeah, would absolutely. love that. That yeah. sounds great. Because we had the other ones Bentley that on. We did yeah, that. Yeah, because I wanted bit. to. I wanted to talk about Road Dogs, dude. Because uh, we did. We talked I'm, about fucking Chad Prather. <laughs> yeah. I know. We only we talked about the goofy ones. I wanted to talk about the ones we love, like J.R. Brow. That's one of oh, my favorites. J.R. Brow. Yeah. I'm only a phone call away, fellas. Have me back on. Oh yeah, uh, please. What Anytime. The fuck. I was about to bring up. Shit. Anyway, I appreciate you guys. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right. All Bye, right, Sam. Buddy. Thank, Thank you. you. It was fun. We did it, folks. We did it, guys. We did it. We We're did still it. recording. I know. That's why. Perfect. Well. Do you guys want to keep going? Or are we done? Um, We we should probably end it. I don't yeah, want right. to. Are we doing another one later this week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, so everyone check it. out at Loud Boys Pod. And definitely check out Sam's book. Uh, he didn't want to plug it's it. It's called Running. Will. It's called Running the Light by Sam Talent. That's Talent yeah. with two L's. T A L L E N T at Talent Sam on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, very funny uh, comedian who self published his own book. <laughs> like a <loser. laughs> and there's nothing like a yeah. fucking idiot. <laughs> Dude, it's like how desperate are publishers right now? And he's going around like, no, 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 wait, guys. Like, I know we, I know we joke, we joke about this, but uh, he doesn't like to bring this up. But Penguin did offer to publish his book, uh, but there's some weird Oswald Cobblepot. No, Penguin (laughs) publisher, but there's like some weird thing going on where apparently Penguin was only paying uh, female authors less than they were paying male authors, like just overall. So that's why Sam refused to go through them and self-published. In my opinion, Penguin Publishing is for the birds. Mm-hmm. And Wouldn't that be cool everybody. if that's real? Wouldn't that yeah. be awesome if that All was like right. a real thing? Good night.